Welcome to Zika CA 1.6 Business Communication Examination Techniques. My name is Elizabeth Chilwalo. I'm going to run you through these uh, techniques. Before any details, this presentation covers the following. The general competences expected by the candidate in this particular subject, the common mistakes made during examination from different uh, topics. And I think this is very important to help us to, to appreciate the examination uh, techniques. Then we are also going to look at uh, the examination um, techniques. The examination techniques will cover the techniques way before the examination, and uh, it will also cover the commonly used instructional words and their meaning. Those are actually very, very important. They will also help candidates to, um, to understand questions. Then apart from that, we we'll look at techniques a day before the examination, techniques during the examination with a practical approach. What are some of the expected competences in this particular subject? I think on completion of this uh, subject, candidates are expected to demonstrate an understanding of the framework of the organization information structure. They are also expected to show appreciation of communication principles and apply or be able to use communication processes. And Candidate are also, candidates are also expected to explain the IT control environment. I must say that um, this, particular, this, uh, this particular presentation is biased towards the communication component. Now, in order for us to appreciate these examination techniques, there is need for us to run through some of the common mistakes that candidates make when answering in an examination. These are very important because they are going to help us appreciate some of these uh, examination uh, techniques. There are quite a number of mistakes that uh, most candidates make during uh, exams. Uh, the common mistakes that are presented are actually, um, in general, most of them were just, it was just observed that there are so many. So they are not really coming from a certain particular year and so on. But they are a number of uh, mistakes that have been observed over a period of time. One of the common mistakes that most candidates make is to present questions that are outside the, the, the scenario that has been given. Candidates have a tendency of writing the content that are outside the scenario that is given. Now, it becomes the, um, very, uh, it, it, it can become, a candidate can easily lose uh, marks because you are writing the content that is not uh, expected. So it's very important to, to take note of, uh, of such. Then there's an issue of mixing up of uh, questions or written aspects of communication. Like for example, you may have memos, you may have minutes, you may have letters, and, um, and so on. So you find that the layout that is provided uh, is usually mixed up. The format is usually mixed up. So if, if you are expected to write a letter, you produce a memo. If you are expected to write minutes, you produce a letter. So that can disadvantage a candidate. Apart from that, failure to explain information very clearly with wrong spellings and poor grammar. When you produce such answers, you may find that you also lose, lose marks. 
And then apart from that, some candidates have got a tendency of just answering one part of the question. Questions may have different parts, part A, part B, part C. So you may find that sometimes a candidate will just answer one part or two parts and leave out another, another part. That can disadvantage a candidate. In some cases, inadequate answers are prepared. So when you produce answers that may not um, warrant for 20 marks, it means that you can lose marks. Okay. So just uh, on the, the structure and layout, you may find that sometimes uh, candidates fail to include suitable memos, memo elements, for example, to, from, date, and subject. Now, when a candidate presents uh, a memo without such elements, it simply means that the candidate has failed to demonstrate the structure of the memo or does not understand anything. In some cases, candidates may also error by indicating salutation or a complimentary clause in a memo as though it is a, it is a letter. So in situations like that, you may find that a candidate may lose marks, poor expression on the subject line. This is very common where a candidate is being required to write a letter or a memo or even to, uh, to write a report. So you find that the, the subjects that are usually presented are very poor. In some cases, candidates bring out wrong content and uh, when they bring out wrong content, that simply means that they are demonstrating um, lack of creativity. Because normally in 1.6, the questions are scenario based, but even when they are scenario based, you are required to uh, create uh, some content in a way, but uh, that content is supposed to be related to the scenario that is uh, given. So it means that uh, candidates sometimes fail to relate content, uh, content to the scenario provided in the, uh, in the question. There are topics like uh, on visual communication. It is very common to, to find candidates who mix up answers, especially for statistical data. When they re are required to present perhaps a pie chart, they will present a table. When they are required to present a Gantt chart, they will present maybe a line graph or anything else. Then apart from that, you may find that most of the times candidates have got a tendency of repeating answers. Point number one, same answer. Point number two, same answer. Point number three, same answer. At the end of it, instead of getting three marks, a candidate perhaps would only acquire one mark because of um, repeated points. Now, what are some of the techniques that we need to, um, to, to do as candidates so that at least we avoid some of these common mistakes that have been in? Uh, presented. Now we, we, we need to realize that um, a candidate is not supposed to prepare exams a day before or two days before or maybe two weeks before the exams or when a candidate sees a timetable, an exam timetable. The examination preparations are supposed to start way, way back before the examination time. And therefore, I'm going to run through certain uh, simple um, things that we need to do way before the exam, as we get close to the exam, during the examination time, and also the technical aspect. Now, when you look at uh, these uh, uh, techniques that we need to employ way before the exams. They may look simple and other, uh, most candidates just overlook them. But I uh, think they are very, very important. These are the techniques that also help candidates not to panic at the end of um, or towards the examination time. So what are some of the things that we need to do way before the examination time? 
the best thing that you can do as a candidate is just actually to like the subject. You need to like business communication. You need to have an interest in the, in the subject matter. And because of that, attend every lecture all the time, if possible. Of course, sometimes it may not be possible. You may get sick, or maybe there could be just some kind of distraction or something that may need serious attention. But it's very important to ensure that you attend lectures. Even as you attend these lectures, it is very important that you you attempt the class exercises that are given by lecturers. You attend the tests, you attempt the tests that are given by lecturers. That is part of the examination uh, preparation. Uh, I would actually advise that sometimes you can even form study groups. Working in groups or in pairs is very important because it enhances the ability to perform uh, very well, and that is very much uh, encouraged. In some cases, you are also encouraged to uh, seek for clarification. I know even as you are studying, there are certain things that you may not understand, and therefore you may require uh, to ask uh, a particular lecturer so that uh, they assist you. In fact, what it is is that you, you, you pay for tuition fees, and therefore you need to get the service. So you have to get the service in full by not just attending uh, lectures and listening, but you need to also ask questions. You also need to uh, attempt tests and class exercises, and even pursue certain lecturers to help you uh, on things that are not uh, very uh, clear. Now, when you are studying, in most cases, it's very possible to come across different uh, words. Some words may not be, you may not understand them. And therefore, it is advisable to check through the dictionary. Why is it uh, very important? I know most of the times some candidates feel lazy to maybe find the meaning of certain uh, words. But it's very important that you do that. This will widen your scope of vocabulary. It will also improve on your spelling, language, and uh, grammar in general, pointing to some of the common mistakes that uh, were highlighted. Apart from that, um, as the examination draws nearer, what do you do? You need to intensify your studies. Ensure that you go through all the topics. I would advise you not to select topics. There is a tendency among candidates uh, where they select topics. No, I think I can't study this. I'll study this. I, I'll study this particular topic. No, not this one. It is very important that you go through all the topics covered in the syllabus because you don't know what is coming. You cannot guess and so on. So to avoid the panic at the, uh, towards the end of the, uh, towards the examination time, please study everything because that is also part of the examination uh, techniques. Then apart from that, you need to attempt examination questions. These are uh, also the past examination questions. They are part of the process. They will allow you, especially for application, uh, questions that require application, such as letters, such as memos, such as um, uh, reports. Attempt such questions, and then you may request a lecturer to uh, to mark your work. I would advise that even when you are attempting those questions, time yourself, and then afterwards, uh, request a lecturer to mark your work so that you know your weaknesses. Uh, this is very, very uh, important. So as you prepare for the exam, ensure that you get familiar with the different words or instructional words. Uh, these different uh, command words or instructional words are very important. Now, what is an, an instructional word or a command word? Any question usually has an instructional word or a command word. A command word is a word that tells you what to do in a question. What 
are you expected to do uh, in a question? So there are different command words that uh, uh, that are used. Some of the command words may include, I'm sure you may be familiar with them, uh, but they are very important. You need to understand them because they will tell you which, uh, what you are supposed to do. Words like discuss, explain, list, define, describe, mention, write, outline, compare, contrast. These are very, very important uh, words. Now, it doesn't, um, it's very important to know them. What do they mean? Because sometimes candidates mix these, these command words. For example, what is to identify? When a question says identify, what are you expected to do? You are expected to name or select or recognize a particular aspect. When you are told to outline, what are you expected to do? You are expected to set out the main points, just bring out the main points that are, that are required. When you are told to explain, what are you supposed to do? Basically, explaining has to do with the, making the relationship between things very clear. Why? Give reasons how and support with relevant evidence. When you are told to give, there are certain questions that to say give. It's also a command word. You are supposed to produce an answer from a source or from a source or recall or a memory. Apart from that, there are command words like define. Now, when you are told to define, and this is a familiar command word, define, what do you do? You, you are supposed to give a precise meaning, a brief meaning of a particular aspect or a particular concept. When you are told the state, what are you supposed to do? If a question says the state, what do you do? You state in clear, uh, you express yourself in clear uh, terms. When you are told to compare, what are you expected to do? If a question says compare, what are you supposed to do? You need to comment on the similarities or differences. When you are told to describe, because sometimes candidates may be told uh, define, then they will start describing. When they are told to describe, they will start defining. So what are you expected to do when you are told to describe? You need to simply state their opinion. You need to give the characteristics and the main features of of something. When you are told to contrast, what are you expected to do? You are expected to identify and comment on the, on the differences. So it is very important to get familiar with such words. They will, uh, they will help you to know, to write or to answer a question in an expected manner. So ensure that you are updated with the necessary examination uh, information um, as you are getting close to the, uh, to the exam. Now, what do you do a day before the examination? As time is drawing nearer, maybe you can scan through of what you have studied but uh, you don't need to panic. You need to simply maybe concentrate on the areas you feel you are still uncomfortable, but uh, you need to go to bed early so that you wake up uh, very early. Please don't panic. I know of a situation where uh, one student uh, started the whole night, then the following day the exam was at uh, nine hours, and this student thought the exam was at 14 hours and you overslept. By the time he found out it was uh, too late. So ensure that uh, you don't panic and get all the necessary information that you need. But uh, a day before the exam, 
uh, it's just important to just maybe concentrate on the, the areas that you feel you are not comfortable with. Now, during the exam, the exams, what are you expected to do? Uh, there are so many things that um, you are expected to do, but uh, I think what is very important when you finally face the examination uh, paper is to read through the instructions very carefully. And um, there's that 15 minutes time that you are given. Take advantage of that and then plan your work uh, effectively, question by question. Uh, sometimes you can even uh, use the, the space on the examination question paper to just uh, roughly write and plan your work so that you don't just ju uh, dash through uh, the answer and produce the answers that are not um, required or the answers that are going to just uh, disadvantage you. Now. Um, these aspects can apply uh, to all uh, questions that require knowledge and uh, comprehension. So as you face um, the examination paper, you can um, write some few notes and um, just to prepare yourself on the as a rough work and then write your work neatly. But as you do that, ensure that you understand the command words. The command words are very important. For example, sometimes you may have questions like, define the term informal communication. What are you expected to do as a candidate? You are expected to simply give a precise meaning of a concept. Informal communication is communication which is not official in an organization. That's it. Because when you are defining, you are giving a precise meaning of a concept. You may find questions like, state any two duties of a secretary. What are you expected when, to do when you are told to state the duties of a secretary. You are expected to simply express the duties in clear terms. A secretary distributes uh, meeting documents before the meeting and also writes minutes immediately after the meeting. Sometimes you may be given questions like uh, briefly explain the stages of the communication cycle. So in this case, you are supposed to uh, make a relationship between things clear. For example, the stages of the communication cycle may include uh, the first stage is when the message is conceived and the purpose of communication is established. The second stage, the sender encodes the message and puts the message in the most appropriate manner for the recipient to understand. So the sender is going to select suitable words, pictures, and language, or even familiar language that uh, the recipient will understand. Stage three involves the choice of medium. The sender will select the suitable medium of communication, considering factors such as cost and distance. The fourth stage has got to do with it, decoding the message. Decoding has to do with understanding and interpreting the message. Then the fifth stage, supplying feedback. The sender, the, the recipient of the message, may supply feedback to the sender in order to complete the communication cycle. Sometimes there are questions that may ask you to identify. A question like identify barriers to effective communication. This may require a candidate to simply name, name something or recognize something. So in this case, when you are asked to identify barriers to effective communication. You simply answer language, noise, overloading of information or underloading of information. 
using wrong medium of communication. Anyway, barriers are so, are so many. So you can simply uh, name them. So when you are identifying, you are simply naming them. Apart from that, uh, sometimes candidates may be required to compare or make a comment on something. So a candidate may be required to compare. In that case, you comment on the similarities or differences. Here is an example. A question like briefly explain the five stages of the communication cycle. So in a question like that, a candidate is expected to just make a relationship between things clear. For example, during stage one, the message is conceived by, by the sender and the sender establishes the purpose of communication. During stage two process, which is decoding the message, the sender puts the information in the most appropriate manner for the recipient to, uh, to understand. The sender uses familiar words, pictures, or language that the recipient would easily understand. And then the sender selects the most suitable medium of communication. That brings us to stage three of the process. The sender selects the most suitable um, choice of medium and then from the, uh, by considering factors such as cost and uh, distance, then when the, sender, when the sender sends the message, the recipient receives the message. So the recipient will receive the message by either reading or listening. This brings us to stage four, which is called decoding the message. To decode is to um, understand and interpret the message correctly. Then stage five has got to do with supplying feedback. The sender then supplies, the, the recipient then supplies feedback to the sender of the message and that completes the communication uh, cycle. There are times when you are required perhaps to identify certain uh, uh, aspects. Uh, the most common question such as identify two barriers to effective communication. So this may require a candidate to simply name a something. In this case, uh, if you are asked to identify the barriers to effective communication, you simply name. Language is one of them. Noise is one of them. Using a wrong medium of communication is one of them. Uh, status is one of them. Stereotyping is one of them. Anyway, there are so there are so many. You simply name them. Sometimes a candidate may be required to compare. So a question that requires a candidate to compare may mean that the candidate should identify or even comment on the similarities and the and the differences. For example, if you are told compare one advantage of written communication to oral communication. You can simply say, written communication provides a record for future references compared to oral communication, which has no records at all. Now, most of the times, the candidates, when answering a question where, where they are supposed to be expected to, um, uh, to compare, they would simply maybe just state one aspect of it. For instance, they would simply say, written communication provide record for future reference, and they won't mention anything on oral communication. So you are expected to actually balance uh, your answer by indicating written communication provides a record for future reference compared to oral communication, which does not provide a record for future uh, references. Uh, in some cases, uh, it is also very important uh, to also uh, consider the layout of, uh, of um, questions on the topic on the topics. There are topics such as memos, letters, reports, notices, and other business uh, documents. The layout is very, very important. Take care of the layout by ensuring that 
the elements of the documents are well positioned without mismatching them. There is a tendency among candidates of mismatching elements. For example, um, when answering a question on letter writing, there are a number of elements that candidates are supposed to include on the letter. But you find that certain elements may be left out or certain elements may be uh, mismatched. Let's have a look at this scenario. You work for an energy company. Recently, you observed that most of the customers have very huge amounts of outstanding balances that have affected the operations of the organization. Management in your company has decided to re remind cl clients, client organization like BM Limited to settle the outstanding balances by writing a letter to them. Now, when you are given a scenario uh, like that, it is very important to ensure that all the necessary uh, letter elements are indicated in your answer. The sender's address, the reference, the date, the recipient's address, the salutation, which should match with the complementary clause, the subject line, the message, the complementary clause, the sender's signature, the, the sender's name, the sender's uh, title. Apart from that, the sender's, um, uh, apart from that, enclosures, if any, Sometimes you may, you may have copied, copies circulated. Whether you are laying down foundations for your business or restructuring market goals, it's important to have professionals that you can trust. Chartered accountants are key to business growth to help you bring your ventures to the world. That's why you should make sure you have a CA Zambia on board. CA Zambia is a globally recognized chartered accountancy qualification that ensures our chartered accountants uphold international standards and stay informed on the best accounting practices worldwide. Keep your business growth healthy. Go with a CA Zambia certified accountant. CA Zambia, developing business leaders. Okay, so um, when you include such elements, you, you have you are likely to, to gain more marks. Apart from that, um, they avoid a situation where you, um, you misplace these elements. I think I mentioned that earlier on. They are supposed to be indicated. Most of the times, candidates have uh, a tendency of overlooking. They, they have got a tendency of just leaving out these elements, writing a letter without uh, two without uh, both addresses or two addresses, leaving out the subject line. And I think I mentioned some of the common mistakes uh, earlier on. So um, maybe let me just give an example. Leaving out one of the addresses instead of uh, the two addresses or leaving out any of uh, um, the content may result into uh, loss of math. So ensure that you structure your message correctly. Now, how do you structure your message or your letter um, correctly? Uh, there's one of the things, there's uh, something that sometimes students see, miss out. When they come to, they may include all the standard elements in a letter, the one that um, I've just mentioned. But when it comes to structuring the letter, it becomes a problem, okay? So, um, what are some of the things that perhaps you need to uh, maybe take note when you are answering a question, like uh, a structuring, uh, like when you are answering a question on uh, on a letter? A letter, just like any other uh, piece of writing, or just like any essay, has three parts. It has the opening, the middle, and the last part. The opening paragraph is the introductory part of, of the letter. It gives us the introductory um, remarks of the letter. 
but it has to be brief and um, to the point. However, there is a technique that you need to uh, to use when opening a letter. There are three options. The first option is to simply state the reasons you are writing a letter. Just give a straightforward explanation. You are writing a letter. This letter serves to inform you that, or the main reason for writing this letter is, the other option that you can use is to acknowledge the previous correspondence, if any, and simply make a formal statement. We acknowledge receipt of your letter dated and wish to inform you that or following the letter in which you complained about. And then the last option is uh, more or less like uh, similar to the first option. You simply state the circumstances leading to writing a letter. In other words, you may not have been ready to write it a letter but someone else has prompted you to write a letter so you can say mr roberts has asked us to contact you on so these are actually very very um, important it's not just a matter of beginning to write a letter anyhow there must be some kind of a coordinated a structure and a letter usually has uh, an opening uh, paragraph which in which you may have about uh, three options. Now, I might say that on option number two, where you acknowledge previous uh, pros uh, correspondence, normally when you are trying to answer someone, you can use that option. But there are times whereby it may not be necessarily answering uh, someone. Maybe you may be reacting um, to something. You can use option number two. Option number one and option number three can still be uh, used even when you are writing the letter for the first time. Then the other part of the letter, which is very important, is the middle paragraph. The middle paragraph brings out the details of uh, the information or the details of the message in your letter. And the way you put across the message in your letter, it should be logical. Information should be in a chronological order. You, you may have, have to start information which has the cause and the effect, the order of importance, the order of complexity, and just details that are very important. But what is very important on this particular uh, part of the letter is to bring out the details that are required and the information must, be, must flow. Then the last part of the letter requires you to draw the main points to one central idea and indicate the action that is required. You may even show the courtesy, uh, give a courtesy statement. For example, we look forward to be doing business with you. I've talked of the structure of a letter. I feel that even the style in a letter is very important. So one of the things that um, uh, makes a good letter is the style of the letter. One of the other things that we noted earlier on, on the mistakes that most candidates make, include uh, the language, poor grammar, and uh, just uh, wrong uh, spellings. Now, when writing a letter, uh, it is very important to um, ensure that you use correct uh, language, use uh, tact, tact and diplomacy, the tone, uh, which is polite and friendly, the tone, the words that we use in a letter or the language that we use in a letter um, brings out an aspect of friendliness or politeness. So those aspects are very important. It doesn't matter, even if you are writing a letter of complaint, you don't need to write a letter with the harsh words and so on in the business uh, environment because you never know tomorrow you may get back to that particular organization where you shouted at them. So the tone uh, should be polite and uh, friendly. Okay, so uh, earlier on, there's a scenario that... Um, was provided um, 
and a question um, to maybe attempt um, a question to attempt. Now, the content from the scenario provided would appear in this manner. Natural and Artificial Power Company, P.O. Box 36070, Lusaka. The reference, NAT stroke 01, stroke 20. Uh, that is the, um, the sender's address. And then you have the reference, which I've mentioned, NAT stroke 01, stroke 20. Now, it is advised to put the examination date, the, put any date during examination uh, time uh, for your letter or maybe for any other document that you are required to do. It doesn't make sense, for instance, to put a date for last year, 2019, or maybe for uh, a particular year. So uh, put the date during the examination time. I think he, that would be accepted. And then um, you need to also include the sender's, the recipient's address, BM Limited, PO Box uh, 3911, Lusaka. Then DASA, the subject line is supposed to be brief and to the point, outstanding balance of 120,000. This serves to inform you that we intend to disconnect power from your company if you do not settle your account by the end of the month. Now, note that um, this is the opening paragraph. In the opening paragraph, you simply uh, state... The reasons for uh, for writing, and you need to be uh, brief. We have sent details, um, important details concerning the statements, and we have also sent repeated reminders so that uh, you settle your outstanding balance, but nothing has, hap has happened. All the correspondence that we have done, details of your accounts were attached. If you remember very well, the contract that we signed states that the period of the credit extended to your company was limited to two months only from the date you received uh, the bill. Now, this is the middle paragraph. You need to provide as much details as possible. The details that will be able to uh, resolve a particular uh, problem. Towards the end, uh, the letter would also include information like this. You have been given two weeks to settle the outstanding balance. The failure to which we have no other alternative but to instruct staff in the field to disconnect power from, the, from your premises. Your consideration in this matter will be appreciated. So this is the last paragraph. In the last paragraph, you simply indicate the uh, desired action by the sender of the message. And then you put the complimentary clause, yours safely, which should do match with the salutation, the sender's signature, as well as the sender's name and the position. If there are any enclosures required, you include the enclosures and uh, copies. So when writing letters, ensure that all the standard elements are included. Ensure that you are writing the correct, um, you are applying the correct structure as well as, as the style. Now, I want to also mention uh, that when you are writing other business documents like memos, like reports, uh, minutes, and so on, and other business documents, it's also very important to follow the required structure and layout and apply the, uh, the aspect of style that can allow you to uh, come up with a very good uh, to come up with a very good answer. Now other than presenting the layout, the content of the message of the letter, um, other than just presenting the, the layout, the content uh, in all the business documents, is supposed to be uh, very, very uh, clear. Now, I must emphasize that when you are writing 
all these business documents it's very very important to follow to ensure that you understand the scenario that is provided and you need to relate that scenario that is uh, provided to um, to the question in other words as you answer the question please don't go outside the scenario don't bring out content that is not related to uh, to the scenario because you are just going to dilute uh, your answer and then also ensure that the language used is appropriate correct spellings and uh, grammar in general there's one other aspect which is also very important as you answer your questions ensure that you edit your work and uh, make corrections where possible and then remember to cross out the things that are not uh, needed there's a usually a tendency of candidates not crossing out uh, work please ensure that you cross out uh, the work you may cross out uh, you may leave out the work which is um, you may cross out the work that is not uh, needed so i would just encourage you especially on the, the questions that require uh, application to ensure that you understand uh, the question um, to ensure that um, you you plan your work to ensure that you um, you understand the command words and then apply what is it uh, required now these um, examination techniques especially the ones that I uh, indicated earlier on those that are a little bit uh, uh, general aspect they look very simple but I think they are very very important uh, start preparing exams way 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 before the the final exams to avoid any um, any panicking so I wish to end my conclusion just now, but um, I hope and you are going to uh, take these examination uh, techniques very seriously and I'm wishing you all the best as you prepare for your exams. Thank you.